guys, welcome back um, to my Create With Me. Today, um, I've had a couple people request that I do the little waterfall um, tutorial. And I haven't cre created one in advance. I'm trying to think. I don't believe I've got a journal around that's got one in it. So, we're just going to do this um, on camera. I had already made, I've made my cover, this is going to be an upcoming kind of a, like a TN insert slash journal. So I'm going to make one that's going to fit this, I think, just for something a little bit different. So I know, what you're going to do, you want to measure, um, I know this is going to be, some of this is going to be taken up with the bulk, so I'm not going to make it. Um, I I'm gonna make this one three and a half wide. Now, if you're doing a full time uh, full size journal, you know just keep that in mind as to how wide you want it to be. I wouldn't have it too too wide even in a big journal because it's it just I don't think it would look right. So this one I'm gonna do three and a half inches wide. I'm going to show you guys because it's super quick. Um, to do these, it's it's the same concept as using um, the envelopes. Gosh, I'm having issues today. This must be a new pad here. I must have grabbed the new one. I've got another one of these that's almost gone. Uh, let's see here. I'll just get this is quite a pretty sheet. Miss that. And I'll use one of these. It's so simple, guys. Really, it's um. So I said three and a half wide. Oh gosh, I got the wrong paper cutter here. I just found that one the other day, my little Fisker one, and um, I've been trying to keep it out on because it doesn't take up as much room. But the problem with it, it doesn't work for these twelve by twelves. Um, okay, so let me think. When this is folded over. Hmm, I wonder if this is going to be the right paper. I probably shouldn't have used a design thinking about it. Let's see how it goes. So what you do is get two different um, patterns. Yeah, this is going to be pretty narrow, but I think that's going to be fine. Um... And then just cut those down. Like I said, for for the TN size, I've decided to use three and a half inches wide, and I've kept it at twelve inches long. Um, and if we need to take any off, we'll do that at the end. So I'm gonna need to do this this way, I think. So what you do is that's about an inch and a quarter. It, you can decide if if you want a bit more showing than that. That's fine. And you just space these so that you got about the same distance between all of them. And then. Just um, take your bone folder and crease that down really good. So you can see it's about a, an inch and a quarter between each of those. 
and then I'm going to run this through the machine and do a zigzag stitch on that and then I will be back. Okay guys, I've run this through the machine and I'm hoping you can see that that's got the stitch at the top. If you don't have a sewing machine, you could staple it a couple of times or put some glue between each layer. Um, but it does work really nice if you've got this. Now, the other thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and um, fold these because I just think once it's in the journal, just to make it a little bit easier for using, it's nice to just go ahead and kind of That way, you know, when you're working in the journal, it's just going to make it that much easier. <clears throat> and the other thing I want to do is come back and just give the edges, the corners, sorry, the corners a little bit of a decorative edge. Now somebody's going to ask about this. This is Stampin' Up! but it's retired now, so unfortunately... Unless you find it on eBay or Etsy, sometimes you guys check Etsy for stamping up as well because a lot of times uh, you will find some of the old retired stuff listed in, in the Etsy shop as well. I find they're a little bit more expensive on Etsy than eBay, but um, if it's something that you're really wanting, you, it may be the only place that you can find them. Um, so, I'm just hoping you can see now that I've added that edge. If you want, if you don't have a corner punch, you can just do a little, um, like a Martha Stewart decorative edge. Just something, you know, to add a little bit more interest. And the other thing I've done before, I don't know, this is, was just handy, is <clears throat> if you want to, just cut you out some... Um, Oh, you could take a lightweight cardstock, or um, if you don't have an issue with white, you know, just cut out some um, paper, and then that way you can have a real journal, a, a journaling space. But I don't. Sometimes I do that in the journal, and then sometimes I leave it because I think these are awesome to put some photos and, um, and then if you want, like I said, you can journal over it. So it's that simple, guys. I mean, it's it really is. And then I'll, I can let, let me put a little bit of lace up there on this one. I keep uh, oh, I just keep forgetting all my laces. I've got such a mess. I I organized somewhat. But then I've got this drawer. It's like my the lace graveyard because when that stuff goes in there, sometimes I just don't see it again. Um, I'm just going to set that a little bit. You know, I think I will just for a tutorial purpose. Let me just go ahead and pause the camera while I grab, I've got some parchment paper, but I've got to go to the other room to grab it, and I will cut us out some journaling spots. So I'll be Okay, so I found my parchment paper, and I measured this. If you're doing it three and a half inches, I've cut the paper to three and a quarter just to leave a nice little I still want to be able to see the um, you know the edging of the paper and then I'm just going to punch these corners again now you'll have to measure <coughs> the length of it because um, uh, it's going to vary a little bit depending on what you know 
how you've cut yours. Gosh, I hope this is going to cut these okay. Sometimes this parchment paper can be a little bit difficult. See, it's, yeah, I'm, hmm. Might have to have a rethink on that one. So I'm not liking how that's coming out. I think I'll just round the corners of that, assuming that that will work. Yeah, that's working better. Sometimes those little <clears throat> intricate um, punches can be difficult to use. Okay, so let's just get these glued down. Like I said, you don't have to do this step, but it is kind of nice. Um, but if you're planning to put photos there, um, don't. I wouldn't worry about it then. And the other thing you can use, and it looks really nice, I've done it in the past, is old notebooks that you've um, taken apart that's got the lined paper on it. Because I've got one that's got really good quality paper, and I've been taking that apart. This is the, That's the sort of stuff I try to look for at um, car boots, because a lot of times you can get the really good um, notebooks because if you go to even like TJ Maxx is a lot cheaper than stores but even that is can be a little bit expensive just to use in junk journals but um, if you can pick that kind of stuff up at the car boots and uh, yard sales you'd be surprised how many things like that I've picked up for you know, 25 cents or something, because people just, um, they buy stuff and then they don't use it. They do a clear out. We're all guilty of it. All of us, we think we're going to use stuff and then don't. So that's another thing to keep an eye out for. So that's how it's come out. Now I will show you, that's how that's going to look inside that. And I don't know if I'll put it on the front cover of this one or on the back, but it's going to go in here. This is a journal I'll be working on eh, sometime. <laughs> sometime in the future. But I will show you another tweak on that. So, so that's, let me just leave that laying out actually so you guys can see. Because where I got this idea from um, actually was um, the rebook rebookery channel she did these now she didn't use the window envelopes but I'm just going to show you just so that you can get your head around um, you know the concept if you're using a business envelope it will work with this window but I don't know it might be a little bit off so if this is a um, just a regular envelope. It's the same thing. You're just going to take one envelope and, and put it up about an inch. Well, I'll tell you what. First, let me trim these down. So you close the envelope and then on the side that has been closed, just take the very edge off of that. I'm going to do these at the same time so that they're the same I want to make sure these exactly line up. So you're just going to trim the very edge off of that so that you've, you're going to create a pocket there. All right, this is using the envelope. So then leave about an inch. I mean, if you want more than that showing, um, that's 
you know, perfectly fine. That's up to you. Wait, I've done this wrong, haven't I? Uh, this is where I think, hmm, using these may not, because you'll have, well, okay, if you fold it over, you're going to see the back of the envelope, but this wouldn't be the case if you're just using regular business envelopes, but I don't have any plain ones, and I'll show you in a minute why I don't. It's the same thing, so you just want to run a, a, a very thin stitch across there to hold that together. And then what you'll need to do with the envelopes is come back and add some patterned paper to the front here to cover that. And like I said, this, you know, pretending that that window's not there, you're just going to cover it with some pretty um, scrapbook paper. I've shown you this with the window, and the reason why is I went to the car boot the other day, and you guys know I love to work with these envelopes, and I was getting low on the window envelopes, and there was a guy out there selling these. And so, as, as you know, I think you guys know by now, I don't do anything really... Um, small scale. He had these a thousand, a thousand of these window envelopes for a pound, which is the equivalent to like a dollar twenty. And so I couldn't pass it up, so that's why I've got so many of these. And my husband looked at me and he said, what are you going to do with a thousand of those? And I said, well, I don't, I don't care because at the end of the day, it's going to cost me a pound for 10, you know, probably the equivalent of 10 or 20, maybe, maybe you might find 50 of them for a pound, but I doubt it. I think they're about 20 of them maybe for a pound. And I said, well, you know, if I end up having to trash them, that's so weird. <laughs> but that's why I've got so many of those now um, to get through. So yeah, you'll be seeing lots of window envelopes in future projects. <laughs> But anyways, guys, I hope that's explained um, how to do the waterfall. The advantage to using an envelope is once you've gotten this um, glued together, you know, and it'll flip up. But then on the side, you've also got a little pocket to stick things in. And that's really, really cool. Um, so the envelopes are probably, you know, they're they're probably a little bit nicer to use just because you end up with that extra pocket space. But I like doing it this way too because I like the pattern paper showing. And you, you know, you just have to make up the pockets within the journal. But I hope that's explained. If you got any questions, just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer that as quick as I can. But thank you guys again for joining me today for another Create With Me. I hope you're having a great week, and I will see you back here soon. Take care. Bye.